Sen Madam President. The Senator from Tennessee. Madam President, I thank my friend of 40 years, the Republican leader, for being here for these remarks I'm about to make. And I thank my colleague, uh, Senator Corker, and several other of my Republican colleagues for on very short notice uh, coming, coming to the Senate floor for, for these brief remarks. Madam President, next January, following the annual retreat of Republican senators, I will step down from the Senate Republican leadership. Uh, my colleagues have elected me as Republican Conference Chairman three times, and I will have completed four years, or the equivalent of two two-year terms at that time. A reason for doing that is this. Stepping down from the Republican leadership will liberate me to spend more time trying to work for results on issues that I care the most about. That means stopping runaway regulations, runaway spending, but it also means confronting the timidity that allows us to, or that allows uh, health care spending to squeeze out uh, support for roads, support for research, support for scholarships and other government functions that make it easier and cheaper to create private sector jobs. I want to do more to make the Senate a more effective place to address serious issues. For four years in our caucus, my leadership job has been this, to help the leader succeed, to help individual Republicans succeed, to look for a consensus within our caucus and to suggest a message. I have enjoyed that, but there are different ways to offer leadership in the United States Senate. And I've concluded that after nine years that this is now the best way for me to make a contribution. It really boils down to this. Serving in this body, as each one of us knows, is a rare privilege. I'm trying to make the best use of that time while I'm here. For the same reason I plan to step down in January from the leadership, I will not be a candidate for the leadership in the next Congress. But I do intend to be more, not less, in the thick of resolving issues. And I do plan to run for re-election to the United States Senate in 2014. These are serious times. Every American's job is on the line. The United States still produces about 23% of the world's wealth, even though we only have about 5% of the world's people. But all around the world, people are realizing that there's nothing different about their brains and our brains, and they're using their brain power to try to achieve some of the same kind of standard of living that we've enjoyed here. As a result of this, some have predicted that within a decade, for the first time since the 1870s, the United States will not be the world's largest economy. They say China will be. My goal is to help keep the United States of America the world's strongest economy. Now, Madam President, there are two other matters that are relevant to the decision that I'm making today that I'd like to address. The first is this. When I first ran for the United States Senate in 2002, I said to the people of Tennessee, and they weren't surprised by this, that I will serve with conservative principles and an independent attitude. I intend to continue to serve in the very same way. I'm a very Republican Republican. I grew up in the mountains of Tennessee and still live there in a congressional district that's never elected a Democrat to Congress since Abraham Lincoln was president of the United States. My great-grandfather was once asked his politics, and he said, I'm a Republican. I fought for the Union, and I vote like I shot. I've been nominated five times by Tennessee Republicans to serve in public office. I've been elected three times by Senate Republicans as conference chairman. If I could get a 100% Republican sol solution of any of our legislative issues, I would do it in a minute. But I know that the Senate usually requires 60 votes for a solution on serious issues, and we simply can't get that with only Republican votes or only Democratic votes. Second, by stepping down from the leadership, I expect to be more not less aggressive on the issues. And I look forward to that. I mean, the Senate is created to be the place where the biggest issues producing the biggest disagreements are argued out. And I don't buy for one minute that these disagreements create some sort of unhealthy uh, lack of civility in the United States Senate. 
I think those who believe that the debates today in our Senate are more fractious than the debates in our political history simply have forgotten American history. They've forgotten what Adams and Jefferson said of one another. They've forgotten that Vice President Burr killed former Secretary of Treasury Alexander Hamilton. They've forgotten that Congressman Houston was walking down the streets of Washington one day, came across a congressman from Ohio who had opposed Andrew Jackson's Indian policy and started caning him, for which he was censured. They've forgotten that there was a South Carolina congressman who came over here to the floor of the Senate and nearly killed by hitting him with a stick, a senator from Massachusetts. And they've forgotten that another senator from Massachusetts named Henry Cabot Lodge stood on the floor of the Senate and said of the President of the United States, Woodrow Wilson, I hate that man. I mean, they forgot about Henry Clay's compromises and, and the debates that were held during the Army McCarthy days. And what of the Watergate debates? And what of the Vietnam debates? So the, the main difference today between the debates in Washington and the debates in history are that today, because we have so much media, everybody hears everything instantly. If you would notice, most of the people who are shouting at each other on television or radio or the Internet have never been elected to anything. It would help if we in the Senate knew each other better across party Lines. But to suggest that we should be more timid in debating the biggest issues before the American people would ignore the function of the Senate and would ignore, uh, and would ignore our history. Truth is that United States senators debate divisive issues with excessive civility. So, Madam President, I've enjoyed my four years in the Republican leadership. I thank my colleagues for that privilege. I now look forward to spending more time working with all senators to achieve results on the issues that I care about the most, the issues that I believe will help, will determine for our next generation what kind of economy we will have, what our standard of living will be for our families, and what our national security will be. I thank the President. I yield the floor. Madam President.